In this video, I want to talk a little bit about histograms. And histograms are a way of displaying numerical data kind of like a bar graph. And it's a great way to visualize a large set of numerical data. So let's talk about the pieces of it first, and then we'll do an example. So the idea is we want to make it into like a bar graph, but we're going to put each value into a bin. We're going to say, oh, maybe we have these, um, here we have uh, mileage ratings on cars, so this is in miles per gallon. So they surveyed 100 cars. This particular car here got 36.3 miles per gallon of gasoline. This car here got 37.7 miles per gallon, etc. So one, one thing we can do is we can put the data into these bins. So for example, maybe all cars between 36 and 37 miles per gallon, that'll be one bin. Another one will be 37 and 38, for example. And when we're putting data into bins, a good question is how many bins do we want? Well, a rule of thumb, and this is a very loose rule of thumb, you can play around with this, around the square root of the number of data points is a good starting point for the number of bins that you want. Too many bins, and the data kind of is too spread out, and you don't really get a picture of what's happening. Too few bins, you lose all fidelity to see patterns in the data. So around the square root, give or take, and for this example, we'll definitely use some of that wiggle room. Um, around the square root is good. A key piece is the range of the data. So the range of the data is just the highest data point minus the lowest data point. So here, I've searched the data and found the highest data point is 44.9 miles per gallon, and the lowest is 30 miles per gallon. So a range in this case is the highest 44.9 minus the lowest 30.0, which is, of course, 14 point nine miles per gallon. So that's our range. And the number of bins, well, there's a hundred data points. So we know the number of bins we're thinking should be around, there's a hundred data points, square root of a hundred is 10. So we're thinking around 10 bins, but we can fudge that to make our numbers work quite nicely as well. So I'm thinking here, well, let's see the width of each bin. So the width is going to be, let's start off doing 14.9 over 10, which is 1.49, which is around 1.5. That's okay. We can have bin widths of 1.5. So starting the first bin would be all gas all cars that have a gas mileage between 30 and 31.5. The second bin would be between 31.5 and 33, etc. But I think for this purposes, just because it might be easier to go with whole numbers as the bins, I'm going to fudge this quite a bit. I'm going to fudge the range. I'm going to start at 30 and go up to 45. I'm going to kind of fudge these to make the numbers into whole numbers. So it's going to be 45 minus 30, which is 15. And to make the um, width work out quite nicely, I'm going to select the number of bins. Instead of be 10, I'm going to have 15 bins then my width is going to be 15 over 15, which is 1. Again, if you want to do this one and a half bins, or maybe you want to do it with around 7 bins, or 6 bins, or, or 8 bins, something like that. Nothing is wrong here. You have lots of choice in terms of how you want your bins to work out. Nice round numbers are usually good for readers, especially non-scientific readers, because they can visualize things a lot better. And that's why I wanted bin widths of one, so kind of whole numbers. So 30 to 31, 31 to 32, 
32 to 33, that might be a little bit easier for a reader to visualize and to understand. So that's how we're going to set up our bins here. The next thing we need to do is we need to list our bins and we need to count how many are in each bin. For example, I'll just do a quick one here. We have a bin from 36 to 37. And we can see that 36.3 is between 36 and 37. So we can just put a tally mark there and we can keep doing that for all um, 100 data points that we have. So I'm gonna do that on the next slide here. Before I do that, I wanna talk about what happens um, if we have a data point right on an endpoint. For example, 37 is right on a border between 36 and 37 and 37 and 38. When we have a data point right on the border, like again, like 37, we include it in the bin to the right, the larger bin, the bin with the larger numbers. So let's go ahead and make a little frequency table um, with this data. I'm just going to do it off video and you'll see the results in a second. So here is our frequency table of how many uh, data points are in each bin. In fact, we could check there were 20 cars that had a gas mileage between 36 miles per gallon and 37 miles per gallon, remembering if it's exactly 37 to include it in the bin above. So it goes up to 36.9 in this case. So that is how our frequency table looks. And another example, there were seven cars that had a miles per gallon um, fuel efficiency between 40 miles per gallon and 41 miles per gallon. Now, this is nice already. This kind of is easier for a reader to see what's happening with the data rather than just the unorganized um, data points in the previous slide. But we can make this a little bit better by making a histogram out of this. So with the histogram, it's like a bar graph, but it's a continuous bar graph. So the bars are all going to be touching because we're totally breaking up our x-axis within a range, and this range, uh, in this case, between 30 and 45, into bins where every number is included in one bin. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll give a title to this a little bit later. Let's mark the axes. So this is, let's do a frequency one. I didn't put the, the um, column for relative frequency in our frequency table. Since I'm gonna make a frequency uh, histogram here, if you wanna make a relative frequency histogram, you could do that as well. It'll look pretty much the same, but your y-axis will have the relative frequency instead of the frequency on it. And our x-axis is miles per gallon. And we don't want to start right at zero. And rather than having a huge blank spot, I will just break the x-axis. And to say that, I am going to put a little, um, a little squiggle there. And we'll say this is 30. So I'm breaking off everything from zero to 30. And so we'll go up 31, 32, 33, 34, etc. I'll just stop there. I'm going to draw the first few bars, and then I'll show you a computer printout of how this works so it's a little more accurate. So I want to mark off on my frequency table. So let's say this goes up to 21. So this will be, say, 5, 10, 15, one day I can expend that, extend that up a little bit. Again, this isn't super accurate. This is just a sketch, but that's okay for our purposes right now. That's enough. So the first bin is between 30 and 31. So there are there is one car there. So that'll go up 
to one. The size of that band is one, so the height of it will be one on our y-axis. 31 to 32 is also one. 32 to 33 is four. Four is around here, let's say. And 33 to 34 is six. Six is about here. So there's the height of the bin for the uh, cars that have a gas mileage between 33 and 34 miles per gallon. And looking at this, just the graph so far, you can kind of easily read off how many cars have a gas mileage within that bin. So on the next slide, I'm going to show you what the histogram looks like more precisely with a computer printout. So there is a histogram of our data set. This was done by a program called SPSS. And we can maybe give a title to this histogram, something like histogram for, um, let's write this, histogram for 100 EPA, Environmental Protection Agency, gas mileage ratings. And this is in miles per gallon, which is an American unit. In Canada, we use liters per 100 kilometers, but it's the same idea. Okay. So looking at this, we can notice some patterns in the data. One thing that I notice is that most of the data seems to be in the center of the data set. There seems to be lots of cars towards the middle. So there's 20 cars that have a gas mileage rating between 36 and 37, and 21 cars that have a gas mileage between 37 and 38 miles per gallon. So most of them seem to be in the center. Very few at the edges, only one in 30 to 31 and 31 to 32 and same on the other side it's there's very few so it looks like the data is kind of mushed towards the center most data is in the center and then we can ask questions along the lines of well maybe we could say what's roughly the cutoff for the highest 25 percent of um, gas mileage ratings so this is the larger bit of the data, so we want to have the kind of 25% highest. So if it's 100 data points, and we want the cutoff that gives us the highest 25%. Since there's 100 data points, it'll be 25 mileage ratings. So pause the video and see if you can work that out yourself. See what you can glean from this. Maybe going back to the frequency table will help you as well. Okay, so it turns out, and if you've counted, you would have found this as well, that the 25th highest data point, or the 25 highest data points, are within this bin and above. So we know the cutoff for the highest 25% is in that bin from 38 to 39. And you can go back to your um, frequency table and check that. There's one here, one here, three, seven, eight, and there's 10 in this bin. So the 25th largest is somewhere in this bin. So we can say that the 25, the highest 25% of gas mileage ratings are above 
38 miles per gallon. And similar questions can be answered just like this. You have lots of information from this chart and from the frequency table as well. But you get a sense of the shape of the data um, by looking at the histogram. Everything is bunched up in the middle. And that's kind of nice. And it seems kind of symmetric. So there's the data is in the middle. And roughly on either side, it looks about the same. So it's symmetric about kind of the middle, which is really nice to know.